You know, of course, that there are four tests in the IELTS. The first test you do is the listening module. You did a listening test this morning. You know that there are four sections. Each section has 10 marks, so the total mark is 40. Now, for all IELTS tests, reading, writing, listening, and speaking, the maximum mark is nine. The minimum mark is zero. It's very difficult to get zero. So this mark is out of 40, and it's reduced to a nine. Now, most of you, I think, are doing IELTS because you want to go to an English-speaking university, and probably you need an IELTS 6.5. In listening, to get a 6.5, you need to get 28 correct. 28 will give you a 6.5. In other words, you can make 12 mistakes. All right? You know that if you're doing the paper version, like this morning, you get 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. If you're doing the computer version, of course, you put your answers straight into the computer, so you don't get 10 minutes if you're doing the computer version. Now, this is what IELTS says about each part of the test. You'll have 30 seconds to read the questions. Then, you listen and you write the answers on the answer sheet. Then again, you will have some time, 20 or 30 seconds, to read the questions again. Again, you'll listen and write the answers on the question paper. And then at the end of each section, you'll have 30 seconds to check your answers. Please, write your answers on the question paper. Only write your answers on the answer sheet when you have the 10 minutes to transfer. So, in the 30 seconds, read the questions. Highlight the key words. Well, they say highlight, but you're not actually allowed to use a highlighter. IELTS will give you this beautiful red pen from Thailand, which is for you to keep as a souvenir. So you cannot highlight, but you can circle and underline. Please don't be afraid to write on the question paper. At the end of the test, the question paper is destroyed. Nobody looks at the question paper. They only look at your answer sheet. So feel free to write on the question paper. Try to predict the answers. Now, you're doing a listening test, but you're also doing a test of your vocabulary. And IELTS loves to give you synonyms. In the reading and the listening, they love synonyms. Synonyms are different words with the same meaning. So I can say, she is pretty, she is beautiful. Pretty and beautiful are synonyms. So throughout the listening test and throughout the reading test, you will be tested on your vocabulary. Do you know different words for the same meaning? Some questions will be very easy for you. Some questions will be very difficult. In fact, some questions will be so difficult, you won't find the answer. Because IELTS is a placement test. It places you at your correct level of English. Now, if you're an intermediate student, you're probably going to get 16 to 20 correct. 16 to 20, which gives you an IELTS of 4.5 or 5. If you're an intermediate student, you're not going to get a 6.5 because you're not at that level of English. So, because some questions will be very difficult for you, always look for two to three answers at the same time because you may miss an answer. So don't look at one question, one answer. Look at two to three questions and two to three answers. 
don't worry if you miss a question. Look, there it says it. Look, look, look. Don't worry. If I was doing the IELTS test, I'd be very worried if I miss a question. But it says here, don't worry. Okay, it must be true. It's written there. So actually, some questions will be difficult for you, but don't worry. Don't worry. You must read, write, and listen at the same time, and you must be able to write quickly. Writing like this is too slow. You must be able to write quickly. Every English teacher will tell you, if you don't know the answer, guess. Because if you guess, you may be right. If you don't guess and you leave the answer empty, of course you're wrong. But in English, we actually say make an educated guess. An educated guess. Try to find one or two answers that must be wrong. And then try to choose guess from two answers and you have a 50% chance. Or, if you want to guess, you can close your eyes, get your pencil, and you may be right. Or, like me, if you are a Christian, you can close your eyes, help me please, and if you're lucky, the answer will come down. All right, but the main thing is give an answer for every question. An answer for every question. Now, during the transfer, please be careful of the spelling. You can use American English or English English, but if the spelling is wrong, your answer will be marked wrong. Be careful with the grammar, plural nouns, the tenses and the word forms, and write in a legible way. Legible means a clear way. Now these days many students don't write. They text or they type. But in the IELTS test you have to write. And if the marker cannot read your writing, it will be marked wrong. The markers don't have time to study your English. So if you want to change an answer, either use this beautiful IELTS eraser, also given to you free of charge, or draw a line and write again. But don't write on top. If you do that and the marker cannot understand it, immediately it's wrong. They don't spend five minutes studying your answer. If they cannot read it, it would be marked wrong. And again, the magic word, guess. Okay, now you've done a listening test this morning, but we're going to do one more listening, but only section one. So everybody, open your page at section one. Now in the real test, you would have 30 seconds to look at the questions. So let's look at the questions together. For every IELTS question, reading, writing, listening, speaking, read the instructions very carefully. Write no more than three words or a number. No more than three words or a number. Or a number. That means if you write one number, one word, it's wrong. So read the instructions very carefully. In every test, students get marked wrong because they don't follow the instructions. At the beginning of the listening, you'll be, give, you'll be given an example. Here the example is Kenya. Then, usually, question one is spelt for you. So we want the surname or the family name of Jacob. For number two, we want the name of the college. Now, as I said, some questions will be very easy, some questions will be more difficult, and I think Question three is more difficult. We want the postcode. Now, Bristol is in England, and in England, every town has a postcode. 
it's usually six or seven digits. Six or seven digits. For this answer, it's six digits. Letter, letter, number, number, letter, letter. Letter, letter, number, number, letter, letter. Now, when I give this test to my students, I watch them. They are listening very carefully. They have their pencil on the paper. The answer, the pencil is still on the paper. Nothing has happened because the answer has gone and they didn't hear it. Or some of them start to write at the end and they have forgotten. So for number three, as soon as you hear the first digit, start writing. Letter, letter, number, number, letter, letter. Four and five, we want the width and the height, but they don't say width, they don't say height. They use synonyms, they use other words that have the same meaning. You must write M, M. You must write M. But if you write meters, it will be marked wrong. Six and seven, we want the contents. Now, number eight, you have the symbol pounds. So you don't have to use the symbol in your answer. Now, number eight is a very good example of what IELTS calls distractors. Distractors. Distractors are where IELTS gives you the wrong answer first. The wrong answer first. And they do this in the listening and the reading. And they know that you are listening for a number. And they give you the number. And you think, wow, I'm a really clever student. I heard the number. So you write it down. <sighs> Finish. Unfortunately, they have given you the wrong number. Now, for question number eight, in this test only, you will hear three numbers. The first number is the wrong number. The second number is the wrong number. It's the third number that is the correct number. So when you do the real IELTS listening, be careful of distractors. Distractors. The wrong answer first. Any questions about one to eight? All right, then we'll go on to nine and ten. You'll have 15 seconds. 15 seconds to look at numbers nine and ten. And again, number nine will use a synonym. So you will hear economy standard premium. But then they will use another word that has the same meaning. So number nine is a little difficult. Number 10 is normal multiple choice. You choose A, B, C, and if you don't know the answer, you guess. All right. Now, we're going to do section one of the listening test. So everybody get your pencils ready. Remember, if you're trying to get a 6.5 in IELTS, you should be getting at least seven correct. At least seven correct for each section. Section 1. You will hear a telephone conversation between a customer and an agent at a company which ships large boxes overseas. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 8 on page 2. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning, Packham's shipping agents. Can I help you? Oh, yes. I'm ringing to make inquiries about sending a large box, uh, a container, back home to Kenya from the UK. Yes, of course. Would you like me to try and find some quotations for you? Yes, that'd be great. Thank you. The country of destination is Kenya. So, Kenya has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 8. Good morning, Packham's shipping agents. Can I help you? 
Oh, yes. I'm ringing to make inquiries about sending a large box, uh, a container, back home to Kenya from the UK. Yes, of course. Would you like me to try and find some quotations for you? Yes, that'd be great. Thank you. Well, first of all, I need a few details from you. Fine. Can I take your name? It's Jacob M. Kerry. Can you spell your surname, please? Yes, it's M K E R E. Is that M for mother? Yes. Thank you. And you say that you will be sending the box to Kenya? That's right. And where would you like the box picked up from? From college, if possible. Yes, of course. I'll take down the address now. It's Westall College. Is that W E S T A L L? Yes, college. Westall College. And where's that? It's Downlands Road in Bristol. Oh, yes, I know it. And the postcode? It's B S 8 9 P U. Right. And I need to know the size. Yes, I've measured it carefully and it's 1.5 metres long. Right. 0.75 metres wide. OK. And it's 0.5 metres high or, or, or deep. Great. So I'll calculate the volume in a moment and get some quotes for that. But first, can you tell me, you know, very generally, what will be in the box? Yes,、uh, th there's mostly clothes. OK. a y And there's some books. OK, a y good.、Um, anything else?、Uh, yes, th there's also some toys. OK, a y and what is the total value, do you think, of the contents? Well, the main costs are the clothes and the books. They'll be about £1,500. But then the toys are about another £200. So I'd put down £1,700. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 9 and 10 on page 3. Now listen and answer questions 9 and 10. OK, right. Now, obviously, insurance is an important thing to consider, and our companies are able to offer very good rates in a number of different all inclusive packages.、Uh, sorry, could you explain a bit more? Yes, sorry.、Um, there's really three rates according to quality of insurance cover. There's the highest comprehensive cover, which is premium rate, then there's standard rate, and then there's economy rate. That one will only cover the cost of the contents second hand. Oh, I've been stung before with economy insurance, so、um, I'll go for the highest. Mm hmm. And Can I just check? Would you want home delivery or to a local depot, or would you want to pick it up at the nearest port? The port would be fine.、Uh, I've got transport that end. Fine. And will you be paying by credit card? Can I pay by c h e q u e That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So, in the real IELTS test, you would have half a minute, 30 seconds, to check your answers. Here are the answers, so please check yourselves. At the, if you cannot see at the back, question 9 is C and question 10 is A. 9, C, 10, A. If you have any questions, please ask. For 4 and 5, you must have M, 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 but not meters. And for number eight, you can have a comma or no comma, but not a decimal point. Not a decimal point. Any questions about section one? Yes? Okay, no, you don't need to capitalize. You can use capital letters or you, you can use lower case. It doesn't matter. But please make sure you write clearly. Remember, if they cannot read your writing, they will mark it wrong. So if your writing is tidy, 
use lowercase. If your writing is untidy, use capital letters. Anything else? So as I said, if you're trying to get a 6.5, you should be getting about 7 correct for each section. So you should be getting at least 7 correct, at least. Now, what can you do if you're having problems with listening? Well, IELTS can help you. The University of Cambridge and IELTS publishes these books. There are 13 of these books. This is book number 10. Each of these books has four IELTS tests, real tests. So by buying one of these books, you can do four listenings and four readings to give you practice before you do the real IELTS test. The books, you can buy them in Fahasa in districts one and three. The book with the CD costs about 160,000 dong, 160,000 dong. But you are very lucky people because you live in beautiful Vietnam where we have photocopies. So you don't have to spend 160,000 dong. You can buy the photocopy book for 35,000 dong. And my students tell me you don't have to buy the CD. You can actually download the listening component. The photocopy is exactly the same as the real book, except, of course, it's smaller. But otherwise, the information is the same. If you go to Vahasa, you will see this book. It says IELTS tests, but these are not real tests. Now, you can buy these books just for practice, but please remember it says IELTS, but these are not real IELTS tests. They are copy tests. They will help you with your listening, yes, but not necessarily for the real IELTS tests. IELTS and the University of Cambridge also published this book, which is available in Vahasa. The book is much more expensive. It's 240,000 dong. Why is it so expensive? Because it has a DVD. And on the DVD, there are three speaking tests. And you can watch the three speaking tests so that you understand what will happen in the real speaking test. This morning we're going to watch one of the tests from this book. So this book also in Fahasa for 240,000 dong. Okay, as I said, the mark is out of 40. The mark is reduced to a 9. Most of you are trying to get a 6.5, so you need to get about 28 correct to give you a 6.5. All right, we'll go on to the second test you do, which is the reading module. And in the reading module, there are three texts. Now, IELTS suggests that you spend 30 seconds quickly looking at the three topics. Not reading, just looking at the three topics. Then for each topic, Two minutes to read the questions, 15 minutes to find the answers, and two minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. 13 to 14 questions in 15 minutes. 13, 14, 15. One minute, one question. One minute, one question. Students regularly fail to finish the reading because they spend too long looking for the answer. If you haven't found the answer after one minute, go to the next question and come back at the end. But you don't have time to spend more than a minute looking for the question. So set yourself one minute, one question. Usually, the first text is the easiest, 
and usually the third text is the hardest. Again with the listening, look for two to three answers at the same time because you may not be able to find an answer. Again, highlight the key words, that means circle and underline the key words and again please write on the question paper. Don't be afraid, the question paper is for you. At the end of the test the question paper is destroyed. So don't be worried, write on the question paper to help you. Again, be careful of synonyms. Throughout the reading test, many, many questions use synonyms. So you have to look for words with similar meanings. If you're lucky, they will give you exactly the same word. They are the easy questions. But the harder questions will use synonyms. Questions usually come in order. They say often, actually it's usually. So usually the questions will come in the same order as the text. But not always. There will always be some questions which are out of sequence. In other words, they're in the wrong order. And that makes it harder for you to find the answer. And again, read fast. 15 minutes. One minute, one question. Now again, when you transfer, be careful of the spelling, be careful of the grammar, write clearly, and if you don't know the answer, try to make an educated guess. An educated guess. Now, we're going to go very, very quickly through the most common types of questions. There are about 13 different questions, types of questions in the reading, and you should be familiar with the different types of questions, so you understand them before you do the test. The first question, which IELTS loves, they love this question, yes, no, not given. So read the instructions. In boxes four to seven on your answer sheet, write yes, no, not given. You must do exactly what IELTS tells you to do. So if you write why, it's wrong, because they want you to write yes. If you write true, it's wrong, because they want you to write yes. So you must write exactly what they tell you to write. You may have to match paragraphs and here the answer is V1. So you write V1. V1 is 6. But if you write 6, it, again it will be marked wrong because it says write the correct number 1 to 9 in boxes 1 to 5 on your answer sheet. So again Read the question. Write the correct letters A to H in boxes 14 to 19 on your answer sheet and NB, you may use any letter more than once. That means you can use some letters twice. Some letters twice. You all understand multiple choice. So if you have a multiple choice and you don't know the answer, Make an educated guess. Try to find two answers that are wrong and then you can guess 50%. Now, if you have attempt table completion, this is where you can predict the answer. Look at questions 9 and 12. 9 and 12. We want the preferred climate. So here we have cool. So you use your knowledge of English vocabulary for weather. And you look for those words in the text. Hot, cold, wet, dry, humid. So you are predicting the answer. You're using your knowledge of English vocabulary 
to find the answer. The same for number 10. We want the start of the active period. Here we have late spring, so this could be summer, autumn, the fall or winter. This is late, so this could be early or mid. So again, you are predicting the answer. Many, many questions. No more than three words. No more than three words. No more than two words. And sometimes one word only. Now, let's look at this. This is called sentence completion. Some teachers say it's a gap fill. And you have to fill in the missing word here. Now, this is going to be a plural noun. So please make sure that when you find the text, the word in the text, don't just copy it. Make sure the grammar is correct, because in the text, it may be a singular noun. So you may have to change the word to fit the grammar. So please be careful of sentence completion questions. IELTS likes these questions because they test your reading, but they also test your grammar. So please be careful. And again, if the answer is the Chinese, you must write A. If you write the Chinese, it will be marked wrong. Now, everybody turn to page 11. Page 11. Now this is, for you to do, this is for you to do at home. You have the questions, and these in yellow, these are the answers. So you go home, you look at the questions, here are the answers, and you try to find out why they are the answers. Okay, so we have given you the answers but you need to try to understand why they are the answers. So this is something for you to do at home. Okay, the reading, if you're doing academic reading, is exactly the same as the listening. If you want a 6.5, you need to get 28 correct. If you're doing general training reading, you need to get 32 correct because the general training reading is easier than the academic reading. Now again, the book I showed you, these books have got four examples of reading tests. So again, by buying one of these books, you can do four practice tests before you do the real IELTS test. So you are familiar with the IELTS reading and listening. All right, we'll go on to the last test you do. And remember, when you do the tests on Thursday morning or Saturday morning, if you do the paper version, there is no break. You go straight from listening to reading to writing. So probably by the time you do the writing, you're a little tired. And when people are tired, that's when they start to make mistakes. So please be very, very careful when you do the writing. Now you know there are two tasks. For task one, you should spend 20 minutes. It's worth a third of your marks. And you should try to write at least 150 words. At least 150 words. If you write more than 150, that's fine but you don't get any extra marks for writing more. So I advise you to try to write about 160 words. About 160 words. That should be enough to answer the question. If you're doing academic, usually you describe an image, but very occasionally, very occasionally, you describe a process. Now, if you describe a process, you use the present simple passive. The present simple passive is used to describe a process. And again, these books give you, give you actually more than four examples. They give you more than four examples 
with sample answers and the mark. So again, by looking at these books, you can see an IELTS band score 7 or 7.5 for writing, and the examiners tell you why the candidate got a 7 or a 7.5. So these books are very good to help you with your writings. If you're doing general training, you have to write a letter. Everybody, for task two, has to write an academic essay of at least 250 words. And again, try to write about 260, 270 words. But please make sure that you complete the word count. And some teachers say do task two first, because task two is worth double the marks of task one. That's fine. But make sure you allocate your time so that you spend 40 minutes on task two and 20 minutes on task one. Any questions about the overview of the writing? All right, we'll look more closely. So this is what IELTS says you should do for task two. Two minutes to read the question slowly and carefully. Three minutes to make some notes. Three minutes to plan your essay with paragraphs. So eight minutes. Eight minutes to prepare. 30 minutes to write and two minutes to check at the end. So, two minutes to read the question slowly and carefully. Okay, can I give you a minute very quickly to read samples A, B, C, D? Very quickly, read samples A, B, C, D. Okay, you can see that the topic, the topic is the same. Many cities face major problems regarding traffic jams and congestion. So it's the same topic, but the questions are different. One of the main problems for students in the writing is that they don't answer the question. Why? Well, they may misread the question, or they may not understand the question. But if you don't answer the question, you will lose marks. So that's why IELTS says two minutes to read the question. So, let's look at the topic. Many cities face major problems regarding traffic jams and congestion. That's the topic. I think it's a very easy topic for you. We live in Ho Chi Minh City, and we have traffic jams and congestion every day. Every morning when I leave my house, I jump on my motorbike and I give a little prayer, please, no traffic jam. <laughs> Look at the questions. Look at the questions. This is the topic, the questions. How many questions? Yes, it looks like two, doesn't it? But it's not, it's three. Now, this is the where you have to be careful. You must read the questions very slowly. So the first question is, what causes these problems? The second question is, how do these problems affect individuals, individuals, you and me? The third question, society. So there are three questions. If you only answer two, you will lose marks. It's going to be very difficult to get 6.5 if you don't answer the question completely. So that's why IELTS says spend two minutes reading the question very, very slowly. And please write on the question paper. Don't be afraid. Write on the question paper to help you. Three minutes to make some notes. So the causes, the effects on society, and the effects on individual, individuals. So three minutes to make some notes. 
three minutes to plan your essay using paragraphs. In academic writing, paragraphs are very, very important. I advise you to leave a line between paragraphs because the examiners are looking for paragraphs. So please leave a line. Now in your essay you'll have an introduction, you'll have a conclusion and you'll have the body paragraphs which will be at least two but could be three or four or even five paragraphs. But please, one topic, one paragraph. Paragraphs are very, very important. So, eight minutes to check, to prepare, 30 minutes to write, and two minutes to read and correct any spelling mistakes at the end. And again, please don't write on top, either use an eraser or draw a line and write the word above, but don't write on top, because if the examiners cannot read your writing, you will lose marks. Now, here's a sample answer. You can read this when you go home. Let's go through it very, very quickly. So the first sentence is the introduction. The introduction not copied. Do not copy the question. Again, do not copy the question. Why? Because if you copy the question, the examiners will draw a line through your writing. Because it's not your words, it's the IELTS words that you have copied. So do not copy the question. Paraphrase the question. The second sentence is the thesis statement. The thesis statement. You tell me what you are going to do. So this essay will examine. So the first sentence is the introduction. The second sentence is the thesis statement. And then we have the topic sentences. Paragraph two, the causes. Paragraph three, the effects. So one topic, one paragraph. And then we have the conclusion. So three minutes to plan your essay carefully. Again, if you plan your essay, lesson, your, if you plan your essay carefully, you will get higher marks. If you don't plan, your marks will go down. All right. Now, the examiners also look for two more things. They look for certain words. So they skim quickly, looking for certain words like obviously, furthermore, firstly, besides, not only, not, but also, and in summary. These words are called connectives. Some books say linking words or signal words or discourse markers, but IELTS calls them connectives. You must have connectives in your essay. You must have them. These are an important part of academic writing. Now, there are over a hundred connectives. Here we have about seven. You must have connectives through your essay. Now, if you understand connectives, that's okay. If you don't understand connectives, see your teacher or find a grammar book before you do the real test. And finally, the examiners are looking for referencing. Referencing. This is. This refers to before. This is, this causes, this problem. There, it's called referencing. It refers back to something you wrote before. If you want to get a high mark for your writing, you must use referencing. Now again, if you understand referencing, that's fine. If you don't, 
make sure you understand before you do the real IELTS test. Now that's sample writing task two. Any questions about task two? All right, we'll go on to task one. Is anybody doing general training? All right, so for general training, three minutes to read the question, 15 minutes to write, and two minutes to check your answers. So for general training writing, you will be given a situation. Here's the situation. You'll have three bullet points. The three bullet points are your paragraphs. So you write a letter covering the three bullet points. You must cover the three bullet points or again you will lose marks. Here is a sample answer. So please go home, look at the situation, look at the bullet points and read the sample answer. But most of you are doing academic writing. So three minutes to read the question, 15 minutes to write, and again, so important, very, very important, do not copy the question. Do not copy the question. If you do, the examiners will draw a line through those words. And two minutes to check. So let's look at some images. The first image is a line graph. So with any graph, you look at the horizontal axis, 1995 to 2010, so we will use the simple past tense. The simple past, and if you're clever, you can use the past perfect. But the simple past is okay. You look at the vertical axis, 5, 10, 15, 20 hours, a week. And again, write on the question paper. The question paper is for you to write on. You may have bar charts and again, feel free to write on the bar charts and again, look at the horizontal axis. Again, it's a simple past, but oh dear, look at the vertical axis. Look carefully at the vertical axis because it says one, two, three, four, five, six, but it's 500,000, 500,000. So look carefully at the measurements because in every writing test, students don't look. They're tired and they write five when it's 500,000. And if you write five, you will lose marks because you're giving the wrong information. So study the axes very carefully. You may have pie charts. Now, here is a little problem. There are 12 pieces of information, 12 pieces of information. How can you write about 12 pieces of information in 150 words. Well, IELTS wants you to group the information together. They want you to group. Now, this is a skill. It's a skill you have to learn. It's not natural. So you need to practice the writings before you do the real IELTS writing test. They may ask you to compare two maps and again you can write on the question paper or they may give you a table and again you have to try to group the information. So let's look at this example. The line chart illustrates how 13 to 19 year olds spend their free time in New Zealand since 1995. And here we have common, we have common free time activities for 13 to 19 year olds in New Zealand. Now, you must not copy the words. 
you must use your vocabulary. So, 13 to 19 year olds, what's the word? Teenagers, yes. Nothing difficult. That's what IELTS wants you to do. They want you to use your vocabulary. What about New Zealand? Is there another word for New Zealand? Well, I don't know of another word. So write New Zealand. Don't spend two minutes. Oh my God, New Zealand, New Zealand. I'll write the Vietnamese word for New Zealand. No, don't write the Vietnamese word for New Zealand. This is an English test. So if the word is New Zealand or Vietnam, write Vietnam. Don't spend three minutes thinking of a synonym. So you can write the word when there's no other word. But otherwise, don't copy the question. You can write on the question paper. And here is a sample answer. Now again, you can go home and study the sample answer very quickly. Sorry, very quickly we'll look at the sample answer. The first sentence is the introduction, not copied. Not copied. The second sentence is the overview. The overview. Now, your essay must have an overview. It can be the second sentence or it can be the conclusion. But the examiners are looking for an overview either here or down here. You must have an overview. Now, if you look at the overview, it's a summary. There's no data. There are no numbers. It's a summary of the image. Then, in the next three paragraphs, you describe the graph. So, please go home and study this as a very good example. Now, at the end of the writing, your writing will be marked by an examiner. The maximum mark is 9, the minimum mark is 0, but here we only show you from 8 to 4. Why? Because very, very few students get 9 and very, very few students get less than 4. So the majority of students are between an 8 and a 4. If you are a teacher or you're interested in IELTS, when you leave today, you can pick up a copy of the band descriptors at the back of the room from 9 to 0, if you're interested. The difference between a 5 and a 6 is not very big. 6 to 7 is a jump, and 7 to 8 is a very big jump. 85%, 85% of Vietnamese students score 5, 5.5, 6, 6.5, 85%. 2% get an 8. Your, the examiner will give you four marks. A mark for your grammar, your vocabulary, did, did you answer the question, and the structure. The structure, are, the structure is the paragraphs and the connectives. That is the structure. So you'll get four marks. The computer adds the marks together, divides by four, and gives you a final band score. Now, if you want a 6.5, you need to get 7766. 7766 is a 6.5. 7666 is a 6. So as I said, it's not so difficult to get a 6, but it is a jump to get a 7. So study, when you go home, look at the difference between a 6 and a 7, because that is the dividing line between going to university and not going to university. All right, the last test, well actually for some of you the first test, is the speaking module. Now we are on level three, this is level three. And when you do the speaking test, you come into this room. This is the waiting room. And you will show the invigilator your passport or your ID and they will check your fingerprints. Then you sit here and wait, and then you are taken across 
to the little rooms where the examiners are waiting. You will go into the room and you will sit down. As soon as you go into the room, the recorder is turned on. Everything you say and everything the examiner says is recorded. And the recorder stays on until you leave the room. You do not have a conversation with the examiner. All right, you can say good morning, you can say good afternoon. Don't say good night. All right? So you can say good afternoon, that's fine, that's fine. And then you sit down. But this is not a friendly conversation. This is a speaking test. In part one of the speaking test, there will be three topics. Each topic has three to four questions, and the examiner has got to try to ask you 10 to 12 questions in five minutes. So we would like you to give answers of two or three sentences. Two or three sentences. If you give very long answers, the examiner will stop you. <coughs> because the examiner has got to ask 10 to 12 questions. If you give very short answers, the examiner will wait a little bit. So I ask you, where do you live? You say, Ho Chi Minh City. Well, very good pronunciation, but there's no grammar. Now, if you keep giving short answers, you will lose marks. So try to give two answers of two to three sentences, complex sentences with relative clauses. Complex sentences with relative clauses. Where do you live? I live in Ho Chi Minh City, which is the biggest city in Vietnam. It has a population of 13 million people. Something like that. That's enough. If you keep speaking, the examiner will just stop you. So don't get unhappy if you're talking away quite happily and the examiner cuts you because the examiner has got to ask you 10 to 12 questions in five minutes. If you don't understand the question, you can ask the examiner to repeat once, but you cannot ask the examiner to explain. The examiner asks you questions. You don't ask the examiner questions. You are doing the speaking test, not the examiner. So if you don't understand the question, ask the examiner to repeat the question. But the examiner is not allowed to explain the vocabulary. In part two, you'll be given a topic. You'll be given a pencil and paper, and you'll be given one minute to prepare your topic. You cannot change the topic. And then you speak for two minutes. If you speak for more than two minutes, the examiner will stop you. If you speak for less than two minutes, the examiner will say, can you tell me something more? Can you tell me something more? Because IELTS wants you to speak for two minutes. In part three, which is the same topic as part two, it becomes a discussion. Now, part three is different because in part three, the questions are harder. And if you don't understand the questions, you can ask the examiner to explain. And don't be frightened. You don't lose any marks in part three. So if you don't understand the question, Ask the examiner to explain. The examiner will explain, and that's quite okay. You don't lose any marks at all. So don't be frightened in part three. If you don't understand, ask the examiner to explain. Here are some part one questions. Three topics. Three to four questions in each topic. Remember, you can ask the examiner to repeat but not explain. In part two, you are given a topic with some bullet points. You're given a pencil and paper to make some notes. 
The notes are for you. The notes are not for the examiner. So you can write in English, you can write in Vietnamese, and you don't have to write at all. But nobody looks at the notes, so don't think this is a writing test. It's a speaking test. So the notes are for you. In part three, the questions are harder, the vocabulary is harder, but you can ask the examiner to explain. Now, that's the format of the speaking test. Any questions? All right. At the end of the speaking test, the examiner will say, thank you very much. That's the end of the speaking test, bye-bye. You can say bye-bye or that's enough, but you do not ask the examiner any questions. Remember, it's being recorded. Everything you say is being recorded. So you do not ask the examiner any personal questions. You do not say, examiner, how did I do? You do not say to the examiner, examiner, I need 6.5. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't say that. You don't say to the examiner, Examiner, you're a very handsome man. Can I invite you for coffee at the Caravelle Hotel? You don't say anything like that. You just get up, you can say bye-bye, and you go out. Now, immediately, immediately you go out, the examiner will give you four marks. All during the test, the examiner has been listening to you, and the examiner has been giving you marks, and the marks will go up and down and you will get four marks. You'll get a mark for your grammar, your vocabulary, your pronunciation, and your fluency. Your fluency is how easily do you speak English. If you speak very slowly, very clearly, and very slowly, your mark will be a five. To get a six in fluency, you must be able to speak at a normal speed. So one of the problems that students have is they pronounce every word perfectly. It's very clear, but because they're speaking slowly, they will get a five for fluency. And if there are long pauses, it will be a four. So where do you live? I live in Ho Chi Minh City. If there are pauses, it will move down to a four for fluency. So again, go home, look at the difference between a five and a six and a seven. Yes, this is the speaking test I told you about from the Red Book. Here's the recorder. The timer, the timer for the examiner, you don't see the time and you're not allowed to bring your watch into the test and the book of questions and the pencil and paper for the candidate. Now on YouTube, there are many, many fake IELTS test speakings. Many language schools create their own speaking tests. Please don't watch those tests. Watch the real IELTS tests. They look like this. They may be different people, but they all look like this. Now, for this test, the candidate started in part one. She was a 7.58. So she's a very high level candidate. But unfortunately, in part two and part three, she starts making more and more mistakes. And at the end of part three, she is a seven. So this is a very good example of a seven for speaking, which is most students would be quite happy to get a seven. Now, if you've got time, please stay here and watch it. If you'd like to go, she's 7.58. She's a fluent candidate of English. Part two, if you listen carefully, you will hear she starts to make more and more mistakes in grammar. And in part three, the grammar mistakes increase 
and in part three she starts going uh, 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 um, 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 and again that lowers her mark to a seven. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Phil Smith. Can you tell me your full name, please? My name is Sausan Hassan. Thank you. And can you tell me where you're from? I'm from Syria. Can I see your identification, yes, please? Yes, sure. Thank you, that's fine. Now, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about what you do. Do you work or are you a student? I'm a student. And what subject are you studying? English literature. Why did you choose this subject? Well, I like literature very much and uh, English is international language, so English literature is one of the best majors I've ever studied, so I like it very much. What do you hope to do when you finish your studies? Well, I'm planning to complete my higher studies. I'll be doing an MA and eventually I'll be doing a PhD to be a professor in English literature. Now let's talk about weekends. What do you usually do at the weekend? Well, usually I go to visit my relatives or even friends, but sometimes I stay at home just for uh, if I have exams or something to study, so I just keep stay at home. But, um, but most of my time actually I spend it with my friends going out or uh, to drink something or to have fun, enjoy, enjoy it. What do you think you'll do next weekend? Well, next weekend I have to go to, in a, to a trip to York and I'm so excited about it. Yeah. yeah why? Well, um, because I've heard that York, there is, uh, it's a very ancient uh, city, so, and the Vikings were there, and I'm, I like the ancient things, and I like history. Do you enjoy your weekends now more than you did when you were a child? Well, not really. When I was a child, I just spent all my weekends playing, and, but now I have lots of concerns. Sometimes I have to stay at home to study, so... No, when I was a child, I, was, I enjoyed it most. How important is it for you to relax at the end of the week? Well, it is very important because you just relax out of the whole week because you were studying or working. So you need uh, peace and uh, relax and, uh, and sometimes to take uh, a great uh, time of sleeping just to uh, pre prepare yourself for the next week. Let's talk about music. What sort of music do you usually enjoy listening to? Well, I'm, I like music very much because I'm a singer myself. I like to sing, so I have a great taste of music. I like the classical, I like to the Arabic music. And uh, so music is very important. It's, uh, I, I, I have to listen to music uh, all the day. Has the kind of music you like changed over the years? Well, yes, yes, it, it changed because, um, you know, uh, uh, I used to listen to the uh, almost, um, I mean, it's not a slow music. Uh, and uh, nowadays it's just uh, in the fast, fa very fast and sometimes techno and I don't like this kind of music. I still listen to the, uh, to the music that I liked and I still have the same CDs and uh, all the time I listen. I sometimes listen to this music, the new music, but I don't like it. I just like to listen to the, to the music that I liked when I was a child. Do you prefer listening to live music or recorded music? Well, recorded. I don't like live music because, I feel, uh, because I feel always the singer is not good in live music, so I feel that recorded is better. Do you think listening to music helps you study? Yes. I always listen to music when I'm studying. Sometimes my friends make fun of me because I'm, I'm not concentrating, but actually it makes me more concentrated. Thank you. Now, I'm going to give you a topic, and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say. You can make notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes. Here's some paper and a pencil for making notes. And here's your topic. And I'd like you to describe a special gift or present you gave to someone.
All right. Remember, you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? OK. Um, the special gift, actually, uh, I gave to my mother, and it was a necklace in her, uh, in her, the, in the Mother Day. And uh, actually, I've been to different uh, shops to search for what, what am I going to give my mother? Because, you know, giving, uh, giving her anything is just, you feel it, it's very simple. Uh, but I was, uh, I looked for different shops and I then decided to take a very uh, lovely uh, necklace. And uh, it wasn't that much expensive because I was, um, uh, just I had the, the the money for it so and I asked the shop the shop uh, sell, the salesman to uh, to wrap it for me in a very uh, colored papers and I just uh, tried to put the red tie on it and then I try I hide it uh, in my um, I, I, I didn't tell her about it till the till the party because we we usually make a party for my mother in the mother day, so I didn't tell her about it till the the at, at the party, and when I gave it to her, she was really happy very much and she was almost in tears because she really liked it and she told me no matter how simple it is since you think about giving me anything so that's really great, so I was really happy for for really uh, giving her this uh, this present and she is wearing it every time when she goes out or uh, and she always tell her friends about it look what she brought what my daughter brought to me in my the mother day so I really was proud and, and happy that she really, really like it yeah and uh, so uh, every time I see I see it uh, she she really um, she, she's really proud of it and uh, do you enjoy giving gifts yes I really enjoy. I like even to take gifts, but uh, I like, uh, yeah, I enjoy giving gifts to my friends or to my the part the the members of my family because um, it's uh, it shows that you are thinking of them and you really care for them. Thank you. Can I have the booklet and the paper and pencil back, please? Yes. We've been talking about a special gift you gave to someone, and I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related to this. Let's consider, first of all, giving gifts in families. Um, on what occasions do family members give gifts to each other in Syria? Well, usually they give gifts uh, on birthdays, in special occasions like, for example, the Eid in, in, my, in my country, and in Christmas time. So, um, and sometimes if anybody was graduated from college or from school and, uh, and somebody is, uh, who is um, get out of uh, a hospital and he's now uh, in a very good house, so we usually give them presents and gifts. Do people tend to spend a lot of money on gifts? Uh, sometimes, sometimes, yeah, but um, it depends on the person that you are giving the gifts and it depends on your own uh, financial status. Okay, let's talk about the type of gifts that children give to adults and their families. What, well, what sort is, of gifts do they this give? This is really interesting because the children always tend to to think from their own view uh, that the the uh, for example if a, t a small child is going to give his father or, uh, or mother a gift he's going to tend to uh, give him a kind of a toy maybe or uh, something that uh, is the father or the mother won't use but because the child think that I like this so I want to give it to my father so they always give it from their point of view that because I like this my father is going to like it so it's really interesting, the child, uh, it's very simple and, uh, and sometimes it's very humble, the, the, mm. the gifts. So at what age do children start to choose gifts for their parents? Do you think? Well, it depends how the parents uh, brought them up. Uh, sometimes, I think it's, it's when they start to recognize uh, the, 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 the real relationships. Because when they were before seven or before six uh, years old, they 
tend to not to recognize what do, does it mean to give a gift or to give, uh, and even they don't recognize the relationships. But after seven, I think they start to, to recognize and to feel that I need to give a present to my father or mother as they are giving me and every time I have an occasion. So how important do you think giving gifts is f well, within families? Yeah, it is important because <clears throat> You always uh, give them the feeling that you are really caring uh, for them and you really think of them. Um, and whenever you give them things that they like, you feel that you're really all the time thinking of them. And uh, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, it, it's also tied up the, the, um, the relationships and makes it more strong. Yeah. Thank you. Right, let's move on from personal gifts to international gifts, if you want, and talk about international aid. Um, what sort of aid do countries give to other countries? Well, sometimes uh, it gives... Um, the, the international aids, when, whenever a country is in need for something and the country cannot afford to, 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 uh, to make it or to bring it, so the, the other uh, countries will help her, for example, in food aids and especially in, di in uh, disasters uh, and, uh, uh, and when uh, something bad happened to this country. So they are going to give it uh, food aids, or sometimes uh, medical aids. Uh, sometimes uh, psychological aids, when, as we do, because I am, uh, I work in the Red Crescent, so I know what this, does it mean to give a psychological aids for sometimes for refugees or for even to go for the near countries that in really need. For example, in my country, we go to Iraq or to Lebanon in, in the when when the uh, invasion. And so uh, we help them psychologically to just pass and get over this uh, mm. problem. So what do you think motivates government to give aid to other countries? Well, it is important because I feel that it's, it's, it's let, let us recognize uh, ourselves that at the end we are all human beings and we are living in the same club and it's like a small village and you are, we are the all members of the same uh, or um, the same land so I feel it's it's just really makes the relationships more strong and uh, it gives you uh, it's really fe feel let you feel like your humanity at the end mm. and do you think the aid is always helpful yes I think so because whenever you think of giving aid uh, to other countries I mean it's uh, when they are in need I mean it's it's really helpful thank you very much that is the end of the speaking test. Thank you.